2 Corinthians in chapter number 1. And unless the Lord leads otherwise, we'll be staying in this passage of Scripture for a few days. Of course, next week we'll be out for the most part with the uh, meetings that are transpiring, that are taking place. And so we do it again, I ask you to pray for our missionaries as they travel. Uh, this morning I'm going to go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians in chapter number 1. And of course, we all know the historical background of this text. Paul has established the church at Corinth. We find that he spent a year and a half, according to the book of Acts, establishing work and preaching. Uh, he had not been gone from the church very long till they began to have some issues. There were doctrinal issues. There were personality struggles. There were conflicts. Uh, there was all types of things that were transpiring. Paul had uh, sent one of his servants to try to get things corrected. And um, we came back. Timothy gave a good report. And it wasn't very long after that that things kind of fell apart and went downhill again. I can relate to that. I remember many years ago, and I'll be careful here not to divulge in any shape, form, or fashion who I will be referring to this morning. But I remember some years ago, I sent one of our staff to a foreign country to uh, try to work out a situation, uh, just a situation I never really felt comfortable. Sometimes God troubles your heart and soul over an individual or a ministry or a situation, and you may not be able to put your thumb on it, but you just know that it's coming uh, somewhere down the line. So we sent one of our staff members that was very confident that we had confidence in them. Uh, they dealt with the situation, came back, gave an excellent report. And uh, But as we continued to pray, Brother Gregory, it just seemed like God wouldn't lift that burden. It seemed like things were still there. And so we uh, had uh, them go back again and talk to them. Then eventually they came back to the state side. We were able to visit for a little bit. And just for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit of God would never relieve me of the burden that I had in my heart concerning that individual. And Brother Gene, you've been in the ministry, I suppose, longer than anyone in the room this morning in our devotions. And there's just those times, and I'm sure you can relate to it more so than I, but there's just times it seems like on the surface things are okay, but lying underneath, uh, there are things that are ongoing, and the Holy Spirit of God won't give you peace concerning those subject matters. And uh, so anyway, long story short, that individual came. Uh, they were not able to get what they were after uh, with themselves. It's just God never gave any liberty. There was no peace concerning the matter. And uh, they resigned the ministry. And with one year to a year and a half, I suppose, after they resigned, uh, there were sin in their life. They got busted. They were found out. They've been in prison now for the last several years and still have several years to do in prison. All of that was transpiring right during that transitional period. And so sometimes we don't know. Sometimes there's issues on the surface that are underneath. Uh, everything can look good. There can be a facade. But as we study the scriptures, we find that God is able to look underneath the facade. God can look through the, uh, the outer appearance of man. Uh, God, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Let me put it that way. It's biblical and scriptural. But notice, if you would please, uh, we're going to find that uh, Paul is going to be very open and very candid with the church at Corinth. Uh, he did that in the writings of 1 Corinthians. He wrote him a letter uh, to uh, try to uh, correct some issues. They didn't correct it at the beginning, but it seems as if in 2 Corinthians they did get some things corrected. And yet uh, we find that Paul begins in verse number 1 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Notice that, and I'm not going to take a lot of time to make expositorial comments on every single phrase that's in here the, this morning and go verse by verse through the entire book of 2 Corinthians. But I do want you to know this. Paul establishes his authority. It's not, look, I'm an apostle. Look, I'm, an, I'm the boss. But he simply says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And then he clarifies and says this, by the will of God. He said, I'm in the position I'm in because God chose me. It's not me. I'm not self-ascribed, self-proclaimed. But he said, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And notice what he says in Timothy, my, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are all, or excuse me, which are in all uh, Chaia. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's interesting that he starts out in verse number two with the word grace. When you go into the book of Revelation and you have John's writing of the judgments and woes that will come upon the earth in the last days, in the first opening verses of Revelation chapter 1, down from 1 down through chapter, or verse number 5, I believe it is, Paul speaks of grace and mercy, the grace of God. And it's interesting that just before judgment comes, 
and great woe and the great tribulation transpires upon the earth that uh, the revelator, John the revelator, God's man, would speak of the grace of God just before the coming judgment. Now here in this passage of scripture, in verse number two, Paul begins with the grace of God. He establishes his authority, which is by the will of God, not of himself. He refers to Timothy, which would carry the letter to the church at Corinth and address the Christians concerning the matters which Paul would write to them. And now in verse number two, he says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find that Paul starts with peace and grace. He has a tendency to start out with uh, proclaiming uh, the grace of God, the peace of God, the comfort of God. And we're gonna find that to be true just before he begins to deal with some issues inside the church. Now notice in verse number three, because Paul makes a little bit of a transition in his statement and to some degree in the demeanor of his writing. Uh, he's addressing them with grace and peace. And then in verse number three, he says, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and into the God of all comfort. Notice again, he carries on the thought of grace and peace and comfort and mercy. And then in verse number four, he says, who comforteth us in all our Watch this, now he begins to deal with the first negative aspect as he writes the church. He says this, he said, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now notice in verse number five. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Now notice that statement. It's important as we'll return to it later. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that is, you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even unto life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which, remain, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he, uh, that he will yet deliver us. Now notice Paul is still in need of delivery. Then in verse number 11, he says, ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of any persons or many persons, the uh, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to go to our uh, text verse this morning. That's found in verse number four. Paul says, who comforteth in all of our trouble, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I want you to notice in this passage of Scripture, I would like to just briefly entitle my thought this morning, and that is comfort in trouble. Comfort in trouble or trials or tribulation, however you want to uh, lay it out or spell it out in the scriptures. And I want to say this this morning, it goes without saying, it's a very elemental statement, so uh, forgive me for being so simplistic this morning, but sometimes the profound things of the Bible are actually simplistic. We dig and dig and dig and try to uh, find great depths of the Bible, but the truth of the matter is sometimes the answers are right there on the surface and we're looking so hard for answers that God has put the answer right in front of us in the pages of God's eternal word. Now I wanna to speak to you today on a comfort in the midst of trouble or comfort in the midst of trials or tribulation or whatever would be the case. And you know, some of the greatest men that have ever been involved in ministry has gone through great uh, depressing times and yet they've experienced great comforting times. I thought about Charles Haddon Spurgeon and he said this to his students in his lectures. He said, I am the subject of depression, of depressions of spirit so fearful that I hope that none of you ever get to such extremes of wretchedness as I go to. That's by the great Charles Haddon Spurgeon, who is the great preacher, probably one of the greatest preachers to ever come out of England. 
And still today, his influence and ministry influences preachers, even in our generations. And I'm sure in the generations to come until the Lord removes the church and takes us out to be with him. And as we consider this matter, I don't care who you are, what level of spirituality you are, or what your status is, or what your position is, whether it's the pulpit or the pew, we're all human and we're all going to face troubles, we're all going to face sorrows and disappointments and setbacks. Hey. I often refer to that, and I don't mean to be redundant, but as I consider the matter, it's just human nature. Yeah. It's part of the balance of life. It can't all be mountaintop. I mean, after all, if everything was a mountaintop, there wouldn't be a mountaintop. Wow. The ground would be level. There'd be no highs and there'd be no lows. But just like in a battery where there has to be a positive and a negative, then many times God has to allow the negative to come and the discouragements to possibly come or the troubles to cause us to, to recognize that it's only God that can hear and answer and deliver us out of our dilemma. And I'll be honest with you, I, I don't mean to be a smart aleck and I'm not trying to be uh, super spiritual. When I made the statement, I've been studying this, I've been studying and making preparation for uh, next week with our missionaries come in and then also with our staff meetings we've recently had. And the truth of the matter is simply this, I see a lot of Christians today and especially preachers today that are discouraged and they have become despondent. Right. Because of the troubles, because of the trials, and because of the situations we're in. Do you know one thing I've learned over my 43 years, I guess it is, of preaching the gospel of Christ, full-time missionary now, in just a couple of weeks will be, I guess three weeks, actually will be 36 years as a missionary of the Rock of Ages Ministries. You know one of the things I've uh, learned over these years, it's a simple thought, and we've all learned it, maybe we just hadn't clicked yet or registered, but the truth of the matter is, is that, discouragement and troubles have no respect to person. Amen. It don't matter if you're a king or if you're uh, in the Old Testament prophet or a priest or in the New Testament in our era, it doesn't matter if you're the quote leader of fundamentalism or if you have great influence or no influence. Discouragement and troubles has no distinguishing between the difference. Although I must say this, that many times those that seem to be the most, quote, successful, unquote, in ministry seem to be the subject of more yeah. troubles than anyone else. It's because of Satan. In fact, the Bible tells us in First Corinthians chapter, or Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8, in our text, he says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came unto us in Asia, that we were, watch this, pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. And so Paul is saying that whatever happened in Asia, his life was threatened. There's commentators that uh, speculate on different things, but I believe he's very clear in the text. His life was at stake and in danger. And he said, I was pressed out of measure. Yeah. If the apostle Paul can go through these depths of troubles and cause uh, the discouragement or the battles and struggles that he had in his own life, you better mark it down today. You and I are going to face the same battles and the same struggles. Yes, yes, yes. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was facing, had faced them in his ministry as great a man of God as he was. You can mark it down. Who are you and I to think or to expect we're going to bypass them somehow? Are we more spiritual than them? Mm -hmm. Are we more spiritual than Christ himself? It is Christ who's the, as God himself through Christ has said this, Y'all that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are we more spiritual than they? Great as the character Paul was, he said there came a time, there was a time in Asia that I was pressed out of measure. He said, I despaired even unto life. And so troubles are going to come. I've said it repeatedly. It's not the fact whether or not troubles come. They're going to come, brethren. We have that blessed promise. It's how we deal with them that makes us or breaks us. And I want to say this and get just a little bit ahead of myself. My time's already gone. I haven't even given my introduction. But the truth of the matter is this, that it is during these troublesome times, it is during the valleys of the troubles and the trials and the tribulations that our character is built. Character is not built on the mountaintop. Character is built in the valley. Character is built in the struggles of life. Paul's going to give us a little bit of insight to this comfort in our troubles.
Well, our time's up for today. Brother Steve, would you give us a course, please?